Good morning, everybody, and welcome to the 1130 bathroom break. I'm Annie Deshant coming to you live from my bathroom in Nashville, Tennessee. What am I doing here? I am here Monday through Friday to sing you a song, to talk with you for a little while, and hopefully bring a little bit of brightness into your day. I am staying connected with all of my fans in Cleveland, North Carolina, Alabama, New York City, California, everywhere you are. I just want you to know that I am here and that I've got a song for you every day, Monday through Friday. I hope that all of you are doing okay. I'm so grateful that Sharon is doing better and Mike seems to be doing better. My friends who were uh, diagnosed with COVID-19 intubated in intensive care. Sharon's now home and we're so very, very grateful in our hearts out to everybody who is sick, everyone who has lost someone. This is a weird, strange, scary, never before situation. And I'm just wanting to, you to know that I am here, I'm connected with you. And if you want a song during a portion of your day, Monday through Friday, I'm gonna give it to you. So today, uh, I wanna let you know that I've got a couple shout outs. One is to John Benson back in Cleveland who wrote a story about this very show. John, thank you very much. That story appeared in the Chronicle Telegram in Sunday's uh, paper yesterday, that was. And also I wanna give a shout out to Cool Cleveland. Thank you so much for uh, covering the bathroom break so more people know about it, more people can hopefully come join us and enjoy it. Um, I also want to give a shout out once again to Bev who asked us or who commented that she loved the song Things Are Looking Good Today from last week and told us that I reminded her of her daddy and her fishing on Lake Erie. So today we are going to take Debbie's request and do my song like my daddy. But before that, let's check in with the toilet paper situation. It's looking good today, um, but we are, I know we're getting low. Aaron told me that we are getting a little low, so um, I'll be calling somebody, trying to get some more. All right, let's check in with our guests. My uh, two guests, the big A and Siri, the big A whose name I cannot say because she'll start talking. Um, today, I wanna talk about uh, uh, cleaning the garage with Siri and the big A because yesterday Aaron made me clean the garage. And I'm not happy about it, but I did it. And um, later I'll tell you a story about when she made me dig a French drain. That's for another day. For today, we're gonna talk about the garage. We're gonna do Siri versus Alexa. And let's see who uh, comes up with some info for us about cleaning the garage. Alexa, what tips can you give me about cleaning my garage. Here's something I found on reference.com. To clean a garage floor, begin by removing debris from the surface with a scraper or shovel. Scrub the floor with a degreasing cleaner and a brush. Remove excess solution with a wet dry vacuum. Scrub the floor with a muriatic acid solution and a brush. And okay, Alexa, stop. That is way too much. It's hard enough already that some kind of acid she wants us to use. And it's not that dirty. It's pretty dirty, but we don't need any muriatic acid. Awesome for people who really have a problem in their garage. All right, that's uh, our gal, you know who. Um, let's ask Miss Siri what kind of tips she can give us. Siri, what tips can you give me about cleaning my garage? I found this on the web. Uh, oh man, she really likes to make me read. How to clean out your garage before and after. Okay, Siri says, okay, she got some tips from somebody, tidy.com, and she says what you wanna do, the main thing is you have to empty the whole garage out, like no, uh, excuses like take everything out of the garage and put it outside and then put it in piles a pile that of things that you're going to sell a pile of things that you're going to give away a pile of things that you're going to keep and a pile of things that you're going to throw away and this is the best thing i think that siri has to say and that is if you look at an item and it doesn't bring you joy throw it out 
<laughs> like the lawnmower. Yeah. <laughs> so here's what's the lawnmower in our at our house is going to be in the garbage. It doesn't bring me joy. And um, probably what we're going to have left is like a shovel and some gardening seeds. I think. So if it doesn't bring you joy, man, throw it out. All right, that's Alexa versus Siri today. I think they both have good information. I don't know who wins. You can let us know in the comments below. I'm coming to you live from my bathroom. This is the 11.30 bathroom break. And today's song, oh, wait a minute. I got to give a shout out to Laura E. Laura E., after hearing the song, um, Go Get Joe, she ordered one of these. This is I Don't Care What Happens in a Country Song As Long As the Dog Lives. These are shirts that I sell online at AnnieDeshant.com. Laura, thanks for supporting this independent musician. Man, we all need it right now. We know there are people who are having a harder time than we independent musicians. There are people who have, might be having a little easier time. We're all having a challenging time. But in any way, if you are able to support independent musicians, please do it. My buddy Paul back in Cleveland is a bass player. My buddy Matthew here in uh, Nashville is a drummer. My buddy Angie Hayes back in Akron, Ohio is a full-time musician. These are full-time musicians, as am I. We've lost um, gig after gig after gig, and that is sort of the mainstay of our business. So any support that you can give your singer-songwriter friends by putting money if they have a tip jar up or buying their merchandise or coming to their live stream again and again is surely appreciated. Thank you so much. Give what you can to who you want to, all right? Whoever needs it most in your eyes. All right, so thank you, Laura E., for ordering that shirt. I appreciate it. Today's song is uh, one requested by Debbie. And uh, Debbie, you wanted me to play Like My Daddy. This is off of my uh, CD, The Sun Coming In, and it is, in fact, about my daddy. And uh, he sometimes tells me, Annie, I'm not worthy of that song. I don't, I don't know if you should play it at tonight's show, but he is worthy of this song. You are, Dad. And uh, this, is, this is him at his best, you know. Sometimes a song shows someone at their best, shows the songwriter at their best, shows the uh, subject at their best. And uh, that's what this is. This is uh, Like My Daddy. And I want to tell you a story about my dad before I play you this song. All right, so I'm 11 years old, probably 10 or 11. I'm with my best friends, Kyle and Stan. We are in the woods behind Beck Road in Avon Lake, Ohio. And we are building a fort because that was the main activity for me back then. Very serious uh, construction enterprise I had going on in the woods in Avon Lake. So we're up pounding nails together. Bam, bam, bam. And Kyle and Stan and I are happy as clams. All right, and all of a sudden we hear in the distance this like banjo music. It's like ding, 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 ding. I can't do it, but it was banjo music. And I was again like 10 years old. I had never seen Deliverance, but I knew that a banjo in the woods was not a good thing. You just know. And so all of a sudden this guy from a distance away yells out, it's, it, come on down, it's the weekend. So my buddy Stan, who was eternally innocent, looks at me with his huge brown eyes and blonde, beautiful hair, and he says to me, and it's a happy man. Well, I am my mother's daughter, so that is not what I was thinking. I'm thinking, no, you guys, it's a killer or a kidnapper. He's after us. He's coming for us with his banjo in hand. And we got to get out of here. So I'm like, take my hand, take my hand. And we climb down the tree. We run home. And there I sit and wait for my dad to get home from work. Because I'm thinking once he gets back from B.F. Goodrich, he's going to have a fit when I tell him about this kidnapper slash killer. And... I'm waiting for him to come home, and I'm thinking, like, he's going to get home. He's going to hear the story. He's going to get out something, like a pitchfork. I don't know, but he's going to get his friends, and they're going after this guy in the woods. So I'm thinking, everything's going to go great. <laughs> I don't think my mom was around, because I think I would have gotten more results with her, because here's what my dad did. He gets home from work, and I'm like, Dad, 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 listen to this story. What happened to us today out in the woods? And so my dad takes it all in. And here's what he has to say. 
Well, he is right. It is the weekend. That's it. That's all I get from my dad. He does not get a pitchfork. He does not go get the guys in the neighborhood. And he does not chase down the killer with the banjo. So that's my dad. Smooth sailing. Pretty easy going. I don't know if he ever did anything, said anything to anybody. But dad, I love you. <laughs> and we're very different. <laughs> this is like my daddy. Hey everybody, I love you. I care about you. Come back and see me at the 11.30 bathroom break. I'm going to be here Monday through Friday, 11.30 Central. He likes knowing his neighbors and their children's names. For 40 years his front door key has been the same. Drives in
Let them know it. Stay in touch. I'm Annie Deshan.